Let's talk health insurance. Your dependents don't have it anymore. Have some illegal cheese. Let's look at more 10 U.S. foods you never knew were illegal part two. While many are delicacies found around the world, no matter how tasty they might be, they are not always welcome to cross the border. This is really good cheese. You should try uh, some. Are you trying to bribe us? No. Oh, God. Four loco. Mmm, that must be the sugar. Oh, God, that's good. You might remember the fairly recent hype surrounding boozy energy drinks. There was juice and sparks, but public enemy number one was Four Loco. Yes, they do still make this drink, but the Four Loco that was available several years ago has changed its formulation. In its heyday, rumors swirled that one can of this sugary booze drink contained twice the amount of caffeine as an 8-ounce Red Bull, and as much alcohol as four cans of Budweiser. During the beverage's peak popularity, it was banned in multiple states, and a federal ban was placed after several deaths were reported, allegedly linked to the consumption of Four Loco. What? what? The Washington Post reported that in 2014, Fusion Products, the company behind Four Loco, made an agreement with the FDA that it wouldn't use caffeine in any beverages sold in the United States. The original caffeinated formula, which gave it the nickname Blackout in a Can, is still sold abroad. In fact, it has a huge following in China. Apparently, young people there call it Xi Shenzhou, which essentially translates to lose virginity liquor. And if that's the kind of reputation this drink has, no wonder it's banned in the U.S. Indeed. Indeed. Unpasteurized cheese. Now describe what you taste. Cheese. And... Cheese. Many people love cheese so much, they would break the law to taste a slice. And some Americans have to do just that if they want to get their hands on foreign dairy. Because of the process of making cheese, and dairy in general, it can sometimes be difficult to transport these products from country to country even when they're pasteurized. But with unpasteurized products, it's a whole different story. We don't have that in America. The U.S. takes a strong stance against unpasteurized dairy products being sold and transported across the country including unpasteurized milk and cheese. This means that a lot of cheeses popular in Europe are forbidden here. Only cheeses that have been aged for more than 60 days or fresh cheeses made with pasteurized milk can be imported, a regulation put in place in order to avoid bacteria found in raw milk. This means delicious cheeses like camembert and authentic brie cannot be sold within America's borders. Because of the popularity of certain cheeses, the ban has led to smuggling rings selling unpasteurized cheese on the black market, as well as people illegally making their own cheese at home. Who would have thought that cheese could be such an outlaw? I just can't picture buying cheese from some shady guy in an alley. Good luck with that. Cadbury's Milk Chocolate. That's so bad. Sometimes food is banned purely because of business and money, and that's what happened with Cadbury's Milk Chocolate, as well as other Cadbury products. Cadbury is an incredibly popular chocolate company across the pond, which is bad news for fans of British chocolate who live in America. The UK chocolate giants have been going for generations. In fact, the first factory was opened way back in the early 1820s and started out producing liquid chocolate before moving on to chocolate bars and candy. While you'll see plenty of labels bearing the Cadbury name in the US, the chocolate served stateside is completely different than the one over in the UK thanks to different recipes. The secret ingredient is... In the 1980s, Hershey's bought the right to Cadbury's U.S. operations and soon imposed a ban on importing Cadbury chocolate manufactured in the U.K. because they didn't want to lose any money on their investment. Cadbury devotees swear the British version of the chocolate is better, but most Americans will never know it themselves unless they make the trip overseas. Show your support by hitting that like button. We do appreciate it. Now, let's keep going. Let's roll. Bird's Nest Soup. The secret ingredient of my secret ingredient soup. Bird's Nest Soup is a meal that you may have never heard of. No doubt, this delicacy is a rarity even in its native China. Foodies looking to try this dish will have to travel to Asia and spend a pretty penny to get their hands on it. According to Superstition, regularly eating this expensive soup will ensure a long, healthy life and restore youth. That's interesting. That's very interesting. The main ingredient in the soup is edible bird nest made from the saliva of swiftlets. These birds are currently listed as an endangered species.
species, making the ingredients increasingly hard to come by, as well as controversial. Banned on American soil, the bird's nest can carry pests or infectious diseases. Still, to recreate the delicacy at home, travelers sometimes attempt to smuggle the nests into the U.S. Because swiftlets are primarily found in Southeast Asia, this is a soup that will not be found on American menus anytime soon. While this delicacy may not be popular within the general U.S. population, it is still sought after in some of the large Chinese and Asian communities. You'll have to book a plane ticket and prepare for a long flight if you're planning to satisfy your curiosity. Shut up and take my money! Redfish. Fish? For sport only, not for meat. Fish meat is practically a vegetable. Of all the food groups out there, seafood has seen some of the most significant changes imposed upon it. So many people around the globe eat fish and other seafood. Lobster, 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 you are delicious. Oh god, I love butter sauce. Several sea and freshwater creatures have been overfished to the point of being close to extinction. Now, many countries are looking at ways to stop the overharvesting of oceans and help animal repopulation. Enter the redfish. In 1998, the New York Times reported that Louisiana had banned the commercial catching of redfish, or red drum, a craze perpetuated by renowned chef Paul Prudhomme when he introduced his delectable blackened redfish in his French Quarter restaurant, K. Paul. Later in 2001, the Times published a follow-up stating the ban was still active and there was not much chance it would be lifted. The ban stretched down to Texas. Later, the government imposed a federal ban on the entire country in the hopes of saving the redfish. For those dying to try their hand at creating Prudhomme's recipe, farmed redfish are available, but the prohibition on commercial fishing has yet to be lifted. D, wait for it, denied, denied. <laughs> Bush meat and horse meat. You sell me horse blood? No. Would you like to buy horse blood? No. The U.S. has banned many animal products from import and even consumption. Two of the biggest animal products to be banned are bush meat and horse meat. The U.S. State's Fish and Wildlife Service has banned the importation, selling, and consumption of bush meat completely. Bush meat comes from animals hunted and slaughtered in rural Africa, including gorillas, chimpanzees, antelopes, and elephants. Despite the bans, illegal bush meat trading is still a problem in America. In an extensive report by Newsweek from 2009 to 2013, United United States Customs agents confiscated over 69,000 different bushmeat items. When eating any bushmeat, you could possibly contract deadly and dangerous diseases that aren't common in the U.S. Also banned is horse meat. It's hard to understand why anyone would want to eat these majestic creatures, but horse meat is a fairly popular dish in other parts of the world and is eaten as happily as beef. Why? U.S. slaughterhouses actually once supplied horse meat to many countries, but now import Supporting the meat and the use of horse slaughterhouses are both illegal. As is the case with other animals, it's not illegal or taboo to eat horses in other countries such as China, which is one of the largest markets for horse meat. But the U.S. has strengthened its view, and it looks set to stay the course for a very long time to come. Good for them. Sassafras oil. Once big oil, always big oil. Man. Sassafras oil has always been thought of as healthy and organic. After all, it comes from Mother Nature. And I am Mother Nature's brother. Brother Nature. All parts of the sassafras plant, including roots, bark, leaves, flowers, fruits, and stems, have been used for centuries in medicine, food, and aromatic purposes by people. Native to the U.S. and parts of Asia, the root bark of the sassafras plant has historically been used by Native Americans to treat illnesses including fever and rheumatism. However, given advances in technology over the years, we have been able to look at these natural ingredients a little bit closer. And it turns out, some are not as good for you as once thought. There is a compound in sassafras oil called saffrol, which is a known carcinogen, meaning it has cancer-causing <laughs> properties, which is why it has been banned in all forms. The FDA set a ban on sassafras oil back in the 1960s, but extracts from the plant's roots are still legal as long as they pass through the FDA and do not contain any saffrol. Interestingly, sassafras root was once used to flavor root beer. But have no fear, they replaced it so you can safely enjoy your root beer float. Noise. Cyclamate. Do you normally take coffee with your sugar? What? 
In the health-conscious society we live in today, a lot of people are becoming more aware of their sugar intake and the damage it can do. Many of us have tried sugar-free diets, or at least as close to one as possible. If you're watching your sugar intake, you have a wide variety of artificial sweeteners to reach for to sprinkle in your morning coffee. Do you want Equal, Splenda, Sweet and Low, or Cyclamate? Uh, sorry, the last one has been banned since 1969. Oops. The blog Brooklyn Brainery gave a brief history of the artificial sweetener and why it was banned. Developed in the late 1930s by Michael Spada, this artificial sweetener was 10 times sweeter than sugar and didn't leave an aftertaste. However, a study was conducted claiming that cyclamate caused bladder cancer in lab rats. Since then, the sweetener has been banned in America. It's still approved in many other countries, including Canada and Mexico, where it's used as the main sweetener for diet soft drinks such as Coca-Cola Light. Several scientific studies conducted after 1969 proved that cyclamate does not cause cancer. Despite this revelation, the FDA hasn't budged. It once considered lifting the ban, but it eventually decided against doing so. Cool, 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 no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Shark fin soup. Fish are friends. Not food. Believe it or not, shark fins are not entirely banned in the United States. Currently, only 12 states uphold an official ban on the sale of shark fins. However, the act of shark finning itself has been illegal in U.S. waters since the year 2000. Shark finning is considered an act of animal cruelty because it involves the slicing of fins off alive sharks and then just throwing the sharks back into the water to no doubt endure a horrific demise. What? Still, 10 of the 12 states that banned the sale of shark fins still allow restaurants to serve the meat. Shark fin soup is actually considered to be a luxury dish in several Asian countries, especially China. The dish itself is a soup or stew in which the fins are added. The shark fins provide texture and depth to the soup, but don't actually add any flavor. The fin doesn't have any taste and has no nutritional value. Most cooks have to actually add extra ingredients such as chicken broth in order to make the dish taste good. Because of this, and the fact that this dish is particularly harmful to dwindling shark populations, many people want to ban this dish altogether. While this has yet to happen, hopefully shark fin soup will be a thing of the past in the near future. Gotta stay optimistic, you know? Foie gras. I can't eat this. Foie gras is a celebrated delicacy in French cuisine, but animal activist groups disapprove its production. Foie gras is the fatty liver that comes from either ducks or geese. The liver is fattened by force-feeding the animal with grain and fat until the liver swells. As one could imagine, this is so uncomfortable for the birds that they begin to tear out their feathers or even injure one another out of distress. Even though foie gras isn't banned nationwide, it is heading in that direction. Ah, very nice. The city Council in Chicago was the first legislative body in America to stop the unethical production of foie gras. They placed a ban on the production and sale of the dish from 2006 to 2008. More recently, the state of California officially banned the sale of the delicacy after former attempts had been challenged in previous years. New York City has also changed its perspective on foie gras. The city is currently home to about a thousand restaurants that serve it, but the city council has officially voted to ban the dish in 2022. Soon, the making of foie gras will be a thing of the past, found only in history books and not slaughterhouses. Just don't do it, promise? We've got more. Tap or click for more great videos, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad. And hey, leave us a comment.